Alright guys, today I'm going to show you one of the new features in Inventor 2014. I'm going to show you how to export a Revit family from Inventor. So I've got my assembly here um, and the first job is to simplify this assembly down. So in the past you could use an ADSK file and that would take through a dumb solid into Revit. Uh, now the new functionality to take through a Revit family requires you to do a little bit of upfront work in simplifying the item but then once it's been simplified the uh, the family can be created and the Revit user can actually edit this if they need to, if they need to change connection points or anything like that. So I'm going around, I'm using the, just the, the new simplify tools to define some envelopes. Uh, you can see I'm aligning some cylinders up to certain faces to sizes I'm just going around and applying these in applying these envelopes I'm literally simplifying down the model and converting it into kind of simple extrusions revolves sweeps things like that 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 Revit will be able to recognize so I could go around um, I could use the shrink wrap options I could delete some holes and some features, uh, remove chamfers and fillets, all that kind of stuff. But the define envelope tool is a really nice one to just quickly define them. You can see you can also apply it for all occurrences. So if you've got multiple components that are the same, you can combine those. So I've gone around and done just bounding cylinders. I'm going to do the pipe work here now as well. And this process is just to help Inventor convert it. So I'm going to convert these joints into simple blocks and this framework into blocks as well. Notice that it's taking through the material information as well. So you can see when I select the items at the moment it's saying steel. So for some geometry, this assembly here, I'm going to have to define a couple of envelopes. So I'm going to make sure I leave the original behind so that I can use that to define my, my supports and my other information. Okay, once we're finished we can hide the original and there we have our defined thing. You notice that the envelopes for the same components are all combined into one. And I actually want to one piece I've missed off on this tank. So you can see what Inventor has done is it's actually just hidden, turned off the visibility of all the components. So we can turn those back on manually. We can also edit the envelopes that we've already created or we can also show the original and that will turn back on the visibility of the motor you can see there. And I can just define this last connector that I missed off. So even if you have hidden the original you can always get it back, it's not a problem. Okay, 
So I'm just going to save this assembly. And you can see all those envelopes now listed. And we've got a view rep there for us. So we can also say that we want to include or uninclude, exclude components. You'll notice that when I change the view to view excluded, you can see all the different components that are there. And when I say view included, those original components are, are, are now hidden. So once I've included the components I want, to find the envelopes of the components that I want to simplify, I can then save this. And you will notice this uh, looks very much like the shrink wrap option. And this is going to turn your assembly into a single part file. And once we've got a single part file, we've got a new BIM tab on our ribbon. And we can check the features. Notice the success there. There is one failure, and that's just the link back to the original assembly. Because obviously at the moment, these extrusions and their size relate to that. But if we do a check Revit features, all of them are recognized they're all good. So we know that when we export this we use the BIM exchange export options we can export this and it'll be fine. So just going to define some connectors this is only obviously necessary if you're working on something that's got electrical or plumbing or air um, tubing connectors that your architect or um, Revit user is going to require so I'm adding in some information about where the hot water exits and where the, uh, the cold water goes in. So you can pick these options. You can see there's a whole load of options to define flow factors and directions and connection types. Um, so all that information can be included so that when the Revit user comes to use this model, they know how to connect it. I'm then going to define UCS. Uh, if you don't define the UCS, you'll, you'll see in a second what happens. Um, I'm just going to do a check design as well, and you can see that the model complexity it tells us it's low and there's only 74 faces. So if we had a, a complex model, we'd do that. So here you can see the orientation of our Revit family is based on what we choose. So if you put in a UCS, that would be how your model is placed. Um, we can also include a load of extra properties. So relating to the summary uh, project and, and the model itself. Um, all the ones highlighted in blue, we can type in our name and our manufacturer. We can type in the information that we want the architect to be able to use to then get back in contact with us. And this information is what the, the Revit user can use to then contact us again if they ever need any information. So all this information you can see here comes through uh, automatically if that information is in the model. Um, so you can see if I'd have filled in the eye properties I'd have more model properties through here. And the whole point of BIM is that uh, the Revit user has full traceability of where this file came from. Uh, they have contact details to get back in contact with the, the supplier. Um, and it's got the information related to the types um, as well, so we can type put in a class here. So this is obviously a hot water tank, so we can put that class information in. So it just gives them more intelligence and more information when they put together their model. I'm just going to save this. You can see note here Revit family file. I'm going to save it to my desktop, and it just takes a few moments. You can see it's going through checking all the features again, and it will go through and it will just export a Revit family model. So we can see a translation report and you can see now the success of all the extrusions and the connectors and at the top there there is a link you can see where the source file came from and the target file that it produced so there's always history related to it. So if I just quickly fire up Revit I can open that family and if I browse to my thing you can see here here's my RFA file which I can open. And I've got my obviously top view and I've got my 3D view and if I turn on the realistic shaded view you can see it's even brought through how the component looks. So thank you for your time today, I hope you enjoy the new feature.